All right, this video is going to be a very quick review of the normal model. I'm not going to lie to you, the normal model is probably one of the most used models in all of statistics. It could be used to deal with distributions of data, it could be used in probability, it could be used in sampling, it could literally be used in any situation that is normal. And we see this normal model popping up across many different topics in all of statistics. In fact, I often tell students that if you simply understand the normal model, I guess I can't guarantee that you're going to get it through on the AP stats test, but you're going to get a lot of questions right if you just understand the normal model. All right, so what do you need to know? Well, all you need is the mean and standard deviation, and there's nothing you cannot do. All you need when you're working with the normal model is the mean and standard deviation. In fact, the normal model is defined by nothing more than the mean and the standard deviation of the data. Now, to help you with the normal model, you're going to need two functions on your calculator normal CDF on your calculator to find the area above, below, or in between, and invert norm if you know the area above or below and you want to find the value. Now, if you have been somewhat familiar with invert norm and normal CDF, you should be okay with this. Now, some teachers may have you use normal model formula sheets or normal model calculation sheets where you have to look up all this information. I don't do that in my classroom. I let my kids use their TID4, normal CDF, and invert norm. Hopefully your teacher does the same. If not, pay attention to this video and I'll go over it all. All right. Remember the normal model is this beautiful wonder normal model that is bell-shaped, right? The normal model says, well, smack dab in the middle is what you expect. That's the mean. You always expect the mean to happen. But the further you move above or below the mean, the less likely those types of values occur. So we go one standard deviation above, two standard deviations above, three standard deviations above, one below, one, two below, and then three below. Now, traditionally we know that 68% of data is within one standard deviation. That is why if you go all the way back to the very beginning of AP Statistics, we said that most data is within one standard deviation of the mean. And that's true, 68% is most of the data that is within one standard deviation, plus or minus. 95% of data is within two standard deviations, and then 99.7% of data is within three standard deviations. So very little data is outside of three standard deviations from the mean, as long as we follow a normal model. All right, let's just jump right into some problems, because working with the normal model is quite simple, and the problems are very easy. All right, so the mean height of teenage girls is 64 inches with a standard deviation of 2.65 inches. So the mean height is 64, the standard deviation is 2.65, and it does say the distribution falls in normal model, which means we're free to use all of our normal model calculations. Now, the only thing I'm going to say before we begin is the normal model is universal between many, many, many different scenarios. So to use the normal model, you need z-scores. Z-scores. Remember, what's a z-score? How many standard deviations you are above or below the mean. That's exactly what a normal model shows. So you always need z-scores. All right, so what percent of girls are above 66 inches tall? Well, if I'm thinking about that normal model, there it is. Right smack dab in the middle is 64, up 2.5, I'm sorry, 2.65. Up another, up another, down, down, down. All right, where does 66 fall? Well, I can't answer what percent of girls are above 66 until I find where 66 falls. So I need the z-score. 66 minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. All right, sorry for my very crappy writing, but you'll get used to it. 66 minus 64 divided by 2.65 is 0.755. Okay, which means that if you are 66 inches tall, you fall somewhere right around here, 0.75, not even a full standard deviation above the mean. Now, how do I find the percent above it? Well, you could get out what's called a Z chart or a Z table. I'm not going to make anybody do that. I'm just going to ask that you use your calculator. So you're going to go to normal CDF. We want to look above this, so I'm going to start at my z-score of 0.755. Remember, normal CDF only speaks in the language of z-scores. Now, I need to go all the way up forever. Well, that would be infinity, and I don't have an infinity button on my calculator, so I'm just going to put a bunch of nines there to represent that I'm going way up. 
Leave your mean and standard deviation at 0 and 1. That's because those are the z-scores for a normal model, right? A normal model in terms of z-scores has a mean of 0 because it is 0 standard deviations from itself, and it has a standard deviation of 1. And hit enter a couple times, and boom, 22.51%. So 22.51% of girls are above 60 inches, 66 inches tall. All right, what percent of girls are below 55 inches? Well, once again, I got to find where 55 inches falls on the model. So I'm going to find my z-score for 55 inches by subtracting the mean and dividing by the standard deviation. So 55 minus 64 divided by my, my standard deviation is negative 3.396. Negative 3.396. Now, if you understand the normal model, this is very unlikely. Very rare for a girl to be below 55 inches. Not one, not two, not three, but somewhere right around here. Negative 3.396. That's very, very low. So to find the percent of girls that are below that, I'm going to go and grab normal CDF. Now, I want to look below. So remember how normal CDF works. It works from a lower value to an upper value. So I want to look below. So I'm going to start way down at negative infinity, way below. Well, that's going to be negative 99999, right? Because there is no infinity button on your calculator. And then I'm going to stop at my z-score of negative 3.396. So what I'm doing is I'm asking the calculator to look at the normal model and tell me the percentage of data less than my z-score of negative 3.396. Hit enter, 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 and I get a very low number. Notice the e to the negative 4. That means I have to move the decimal four times to the left, which will produce 0 0.00042. Um, I'm sorry, that should be up here. Now, as a percent, I got to move the decimal twice. That would be 0.0342%. Yeah, that's pretty unlikely. Very, very unexpected for a girl to be under 55 inches tall. A teenage girl under 55 inches tall, very, very unlikely. The probability, or the, I'm sorry, the percentage of girls that are at that height or lower is under 1%, very, very low. Easy, right? That's how you use the normal model. All right, what percent, um, what percentile is a girl at 69 inches? Well, well, this question is technically no different than the previous one because all you have to remember is the definition of a percentile is the percent of data below. So all I have to do is figure out what percent of girls are below 69 inches and I'll have my answer because that's the definition of a percentile, the percentage below. So once again, I have to figure out where does 69 inches fall on my model. Well, to do that, I need a z-score. 69 minus 64 divided by 2.65. And I get a z-score of 1.887. All right, now 1.887, here's 1, 1.887 be somewhere right around here. So remember, the definition of a percentile is the percentage below. So now all I got to do is find the percent below using normal CDF. Once again, please remember when you're looking below, you want to actually start at negative infinity. That is way below. And you want to stop at your z-score of 1.887. 887, and this should be fairly large because I'm looking way below, and yep, it's at the 97th percentile. So the 97th percentile. So if you are a girl who's 69 inches tall, consider yourself tall because only 3% of girls are taller than you and 97% of girls are shorter than you. So you are fairly tall. All right, let's do one more question dealing with the height of girls. So if a girl is at the 40th percentile, how tall is she? So this is basically a problem I want to work backwards. A girl is at the 40th percentile, I want to know how tall she is. So this means that 40% of girls are shorter than her. So 40% below. Well, this is where I'm going to use invert norm. Invert norm is a very cool feature of your calculator where you tell it the area below. When it says area, you got to type in the area below. Well, that's exactly what a percentile is. 
So I'm going to type in 0 0.40 there because I'm trying to find the percent below. So I know 40% below. Now, when I do this, what the calculator is going to give me is the Z-score. Remember, Z-scores are the universal language of statistics. So when I hit enter here in a moment, it's going to give me the Z-score that has 40% below it. All you have to do is type in 40%, 0.4, and it'll tell you the Z-score. So a Z-score of 0.253, negative 0.253. That is the Z-score that represents 40% below. I just have to figure out what height that is. Well, I'm just going to work backwards. The form of the 4 Z-score is a height minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. I don't know what that height is, but I can solve for it. So I know the Z-score. I'm trying to solve for that X value. All I got to do is multiply the 2.65 over and then add the 64. So I'm going to take the negative 0.253. Oh, I got to clear this out. Sorry. Mm, let's see here. Negative 0.253. I'm going to multiply the standard deviation. And then I'm going to add the 64. And I get the height. 63.33 inches. So if you are 63.33 inches tall, that will produce a Z-score of negative 0.253, which in turn puts you at the 40th percentile. So if you are a girl who is around 63.33 inches tall, about 40% of girls are shorter than you, hence you fall at the 40th percentile. Pretty easy. Now I know I went through all that quick, guys, but we've learned this all before. Hopefully this is nothing more than a quick review for you. All right. Now the cool thing about normal models, it could be used in lots of applications. So here's another application. It can be used with random variables. Remember, random variable is a number that you don't know, right? For example, how long is the song on the radio? Oh, I don't know how long a song on the radio is. There's probably a mean, but they probably could deviate, right? Oh, this is cool. I'm giving you everything you need. So the mean length of a song on the radio, I'll use an S for song, is 3.4 minutes. But guess what? Songs deviate. So the standard deviation for a song is 0.8. And as long as the problem says it follows a normal model, which I hopefully it will, then I can figure this out, right? Because a random variable is, hey, I wonder how long that song is. I don't know. That's a random variable, right? It's, I don't know the answer. That's the whole point of it being a random variable. But if it follows a normal model, then I do know a lot. For example, I know that 3.4 falls right in the center because the average length of a song is 3.4. But I could go up 0.8, and that would take me to 4.2. I can go up another 0.8, and that would take me to 5. I could go up another 4.8, another 0.8 and that would take me to 5.8. I could also go down. That would take me to 2.6. I can go down another 0.8. That would take me to 1.8. And I could go down another 0.8, and that would take me to 1. So what this tells me is it would be very, very weird for a song to be shorter than one minute. Don't think there's many songs out there shorter than one minute. And there's very few songs that are over 5.8 minutes. All right, but now that I have the normal model, I can answer probability questions with it, right? Because that's what random variables are all about. What's the probability that a variable is this or that? Well, here we go. What is the probability that the next song I hear on the radio is over four minutes? Okay, well, the first thing I've got to figure out is where does four minutes fall in my model with a z-score? So four minus 3.4 divided by 0.8. Four minus 3.4 divided by 0.8 is 0.75. So a song that's four minutes long will fall right about here, not even one standard deviation above the mean. So how do I find the probability that a song is over four minutes? Oh, I just need the normal CDF. So once again, just remember that normal CDF only deals with z-scores. So I'm going to start at my z-score 0.75. I'm going to go all the way up towards infinity, which is basically a bunch of nines. And I'm going to go and hit paste 0.2266. So 0.2266 or 22.67% is the probability that the next song on the radio is over four minutes. Guys, the normal model is awesome. It can be used in so many situations. 
All right, now let's answer this question because this is a good one. This is actually going to incorporate a couple different ideas that I'm trying to review with you. What is the probability that 20 songs will fit into six minutes? Okay, well, we know that one song is supposed to be 3.4 and deviate by 0.8. Well, I'm not talking about one song anymore. I'm talking about 20 songs. So what's the average for 20 songs? Well, 3.4 for each song would be 3.4 times 20, 68 total minutes. So probably going to be kind of on the low side that I can fit 20 songs in 60 minutes. But that's what I'm trying to find out. What's the probability that it does happen? All right, so 20 songs are supposed to take 68 minutes. All right, what about the standard deviation for 20 songs? Well, hmm, I'm not allowed to just combine standard deviations, so I can't just times it by 20. Because, you know, remember what timesing by 20 is, right? I'm doing 3.4 for the first song, 3.4 for the second song, 3.4 for the third song, yada, yada, yada. But I'm just speeding that up by doing 3.4 times 20. I'm not allowed to do that with standard deviation because you're not allowed to repeatedly add standard deviations together. But, but, but remember what you are allowed to do. You are allowed to work with variance. The variance for one song is 0.8 squared. Variance is just standard deviation squared. Multiply that by 20 for 20 songs full of variance, but then don't forget to square root all of that to get back to a standard deviation. So let's see what that would be. So the square root would be 0.8 squared times 20. So my standard deviation would be 3.578. All right, so now that I understand what 20 songs look like, 20 songs should be about 68 minutes long, but it could deviate by 3.578. So now I'm trying to find the probability that I fit into 60 minutes. Well, as long as I'm less than 60, I'm going to fit. So, you know, I could draw a normal model if I really wanted to, showing my 68 minutes in the middle, up, up, up. Short, 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 down, 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 right, by my standard deviation. But, you know, essentially all I got to do is figure out where does 60 minutes fall. So I'm going to find the z-score for 60 minutes. Now remember, 20 songs is supposed to be 68 minutes. Standard deviation for 20 songs is 3.578. So let's see what this would be. This would be negative 2.236. Negative 2.236. All right, so that is my z-score. So 60 minutes would fall somewhere down here. So if I need my 20 songs to fit in 60 minutes, it's got to be something less than 60. Because anything more than 60, it's not going to fit, right? So all I'm going to do now is go and grab my normal CDF. I need to look less than my z-score. So I'm going to start way down at negative 99999. I'm going to stop at my z-score of negative 2.236. And what this is going to do is this is going to calculate the probability or the percentage of data where the song is, the total for 20 songs, is under 60 minutes. All right, so I get, whoa, very unlikely, 1.27%. 1.27%. If I own a radio station and I need to play 20 songs in a 60-minute window, ooh, probably not going to happen. I mean, it could happen. It's not impossible, but the probability is very low. So, guys, hopefully this was a very quick video on how to use the normal model. To be honest, the normal model comes up all over the AP test. I cannot tell you how many multiple choice questions are going to somehow relate to the normal model. You need to understand how the normal model works. You need to understand that it incorporates z-scores. It deals with percentiles. And if you're going to use your calculator, make sure you know how to use invert norm and normal CDF. Those are the two keys to being able to do any calculations resulting in the normal model. But you need to know the mean, you need to know the standard deviation, and then the normal model becomes pretty easy to use. The normal model is going to pop up in some of these other review videos because it really is something extremely important that you need to know for the AP stats test.